So now let's go through and understand some of the math that Sutton and Bartow developed to understand, again, predict really, how this dopamine system works. And we can go back originally to the Rescorla-Wagner learning rule as the original foundation for these ideas. And this is really the same thing as the delta rule that we looked at in the error-driven learning chapter. And you should definitely recognize that dopamine is reward prediction error. It's just an error-driven uh, uh, kind of signal. It's the difference between what you predict and what actually happens. It's exactly the same as error-driven learning. And it just happens to be operating in the context of overall kind of reward value. And this is exactly what the original Rescorla Wagner learning rule was that you have this kind of delta or difference between the reward you actually get and the reward you expect. And mathematically, we write the expectation in terms of this little hat as a kind of convention. So that's like the expected reward versus the reward you actually got. Kind of neural network framework express the expectation in terms of a sum of the activations of a set of cues, uh, some sort of stimuli, neural activity in general, that indicates you know things in the in the environment, um, with weights that indicate how strong each individual cue or element uh, contributes to the overall reward expectation. And in this formulation, then it really is exactly the delta rule. You could adjust those synaptic weights to exactly reduce the prediction error in, in just the way that we do with the delta rule. So this is where Sutton and Bartow picked up uh, from this kind of foundation. So this was in 1972, and Sutton and Bartow published their work in the early 80s, and they uh, realized that this Rescorla Wagner learning rule doesn't have any way of coding for what's happening over here when the condition stimulus comes on. So there's something something mysterious here. The, the Rescorla Wagner says, well, there's no reward, right? And uh, yeah, your expectation of reward, if anything, maybe is high here, in which case you're not getting any reward. And so this delta, if it was going to be a model of dopamine or some kind of conditioned learning, it doesn't make any sense, it would be negative. And so Rescorla Wagner does not deal with situations when there aren't actual rewards. So what Sutton and Bartow did is introduced just one additional term to this overall equation, and that is this F. And F is the future, yes. So it allows for the system to anticipate future rewards, which is exactly what's happening here when this condition stimulus is going off. That's telling you something not about what's happening right now, really. It's just a tone. Who cares? It tells you about what's going to happen in the future, this reward. And so uh, what this says is that this kind of delta, this thing that you're learning about, this difference, this learning signal, I should say, is uh, the difference between the reward plus any predicted future rewards minus the kind of actual expectation at this point in time. And it's important to notice that this future reward is kind of some estimate, it is the future, we don't know the future, so it also is sort of an estimate. Um, but this is essentially the estimate of what you thought you actually got right now. And so you have to keep those in mind uh, as being different kinds of estimates. And so yes, so the CS onset is basically the indication uh, when this future reward is going to happen and that's what's giving this extra dopamine at this point in time uh, and also canceling out the dopamine at this later time because we still have that expectation at that time. So if we go into uh, this equation and this framework is called the temporal differences learning framework. Um, this is what Rich Sutton and, and Andy Bartow developed otherwise known as TD and very widely used, uh, also used in cutting edge uh, deep reinforcement learning algorithms by Google DeepMind. Um, and these, these same equations have been very important in uh, the Go and chess playing uh, successes that those uh, systems have had. And so again, mostly the current wave of AI breakthroughs 
is sort of upscaling ideas that have been around for quite some time and fundamentally are really just these core error-driven learning kind of ideas that were developed in the 80s. So anyway, Sutton and Bartow kind of used this framework which actually uh, pre-existed their work um, which is called the Bellman equation and it's essentially a expression of kind of total future reward and it allows you to write something recursively and I think that Bellman actually refers to this recursive expression where you can write V of T which is your total expected future reward at all points in the future um, you can write that as the amount of reward you're going to get now plus some kind of discounted factor of how much reward you're going to get at the next step in time plus a further kind of exponential discount factor of how much you're going to get at the next time after that and this can be written recursively and I think this is the Bellman equation where you have uh, the current reward plus a discount of the estimate that you would make using the same equation at t plus one and you can just kind of see you're just adding a t plus one you're just adding a plus one into this equation but the nice thing about this is aside from the fact that it's recursive which is kind of like you know the Mobius trip and GNU's not Unix and all these other kinds of fun re recursive kinds of uh, phenomena um, you can use it very practically to simply say well this is an equation anytime you have an equation you can turn it into a different kind of equation by subtracting one side which should be equal to the other side and setting it equal to zero right so you just move this over to the other side you've got this thing minus that thing and it should be equal to zero but again we've stuck in hats here because we don't actually know the future these are all estimates and so this now tells us that we have this delta should be equal to the current reward plus v hat of t plus one which is an estimate of the future reward minus v hat of t and lo and behold this is exactly the same equation that we just looked at okay current reward future is the v hat of t plus one minus v hat of t which is our estimate of the current reward so this basically says our, our estimate of the future can be written here and this just provides a sort of overall mathematical equation for, for really doing the same thing that we derived from just basic intuition here about what the role of the future is. And so uh, it provides a nice uh, guarantee mathematically that if you do follow this equation, you try to minimize this error or delta to try to get these things to actually be equal, that the system will in some sense learn a set of values that express kind of the, the accurate estimate, the most accurate estimate of how much reward you might get. And the key point is that delta, this difference, is dopamine. And this was really the, the key insight that uh, Montague and uh, Diane, Reed Montague and Peter Diane, uh, d uh, realized that, you know, that uh, temporal difference equation really fits perfectly with this basic dopamine signaling. These bursts and dips of dopamine fit this, these Sutton and Bartow equations really well.